Hi, and welcome to JLTV. I'm Roz Rothstein, your host, and we're here today with Merle Cates, who has been on the show before, and she's come to give us an update of what's going on in Canada. Uh, Merle Cates actually was the force that built the Stand With Us office in the first place in Toronto, and now she is expanding throughout Canada. You're going to tell us all about mm -hmm. that and uh, your growth. You'll tell us what's happened since you were here four years ago. Yes, it was. Right? Yes. Okay, so uh, start anywhere. Tell us what's okay. going on in Canada. The good, the bad, the ugly. We have all of that. So uh, <laughs> four years ago, we really needed to be there. Um, we had 12 BDS motions that had been passed in one province in Ontario in the Northeast like New York State, think of that. So the most important, the most uh, publicized, largest campuses, one of which, of course, York University, infamous in the world, had all passed BDS motions in the four years since we've been there. So let me just interrupt you yes. just to bring everybody together here. Uh, she's saying BDS motions. Let me just remind everybody, mm -hmm. BDS stands for Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions. And that is what they will do on a college campus when they are up to no good. Uh, usually it's a group called Students for Justice in Palestine or an affiliate. Sometimes they have a different name, but they all use the same strategy. It's an anti-Israel smear, kind of goes like this. Um, these are all the terrible, awful things that Israel does. Isn't Israel the most evil country in the world? And they give you all these reasons why Israel is so evil. And then there's one thing that everybody can do that's peaceful. Together we can boycott, we can divest, uh, we can do these peaceful things uh, to, to peacefully change uh, the state of Israel. Anyways, it's all a bunch of garbage. It is actually all anti-Semitism because yes. only Israel is chosen for yes. these wonderful things. So that is what you were referring to, that yes. you had those motions previous to starting Stand With Us. And really the movement, the BDS movement itself was was funded. We knew by, in in uh, Canada it's called Students Against Israeli Apartheid. Mm. The first Israel Apartheid Week was at University of Toronto in 2005. We were in the epicenter of a lot of ugliness, and our students were very vulnerable, and they had, they had nowhere to go. Um, when Stand With Us first started there, and we found students that even before we had an Emerson, <laughs> we were sending my um, wonderful adminicist who helped me start out, uh, not Jewish, very committed, young, and she went to campus with our Jewish students there who were being attacked on a daily basis mm -hmm. at a campus that was mostly foreign students, many, many Muslims, and they had already uh, won a BDS motion for the uh, student union and the graduate union. And when we arrived with materials and they were there to at least approach people and talk about what Israel is, um, Christian students and Muslim students came up to them and said, we thought you were asleep. And in fact, um, community organizations just didn't know how or decided not to address this issue. And Stand With Us was the only organization that was doing it and doing it successfully and has made a tremendous difference. So you're talking about back in the day, mm -hmm. when you first began, mm -hmm. when they said, we thought you were asleep, when yeah. students on, uh, on those campuses said, we thought you were asleep, at that point, Stand With Us was the only one that was bringing the other side of the story. But today, I think you have really energized a larger community. Hopefully, you know, you're working together. I know that you're working together on college campuses yes. to make sure that Israel's voice is heard. I, I, uh, I think Stand With Us can take credit and Stand With Us Canada and all of the inspiring students we've had that are working with us, they can take credit for the change in the community because I know the community members were putting the major organizations under some pressure to help us and now they are. And now we're working together and we have wonderful programs and so do they and our students are being served and obviously not 
just pro-Israel and Jewish students. Um, well, but people are learning about Israel. They're learning people about Israel are, and there's less division and polarization on campus mm -hmm. when you can speak up and have a voice. I just was speaking to a group of uh, high school leaders right. and um, one of the things that I tried to stress to them is to be sure to set the agenda on a campus. Mm -hmm. So so if you set the agenda and you're teaching and you're doing fun things, you're tabling, uh, you're giving out stand with us materials like these uh, which we give to students at no cost because people like you out there are supporting our efforts. So, uh, you know, they table, they teach, they represent, they, they are able to answer questions because they train themselves. And, you know, these are critical issues. Once you set the agenda on a campus with happy, positive information, music, right. even food, food. <laughs> uh, information about the Jewish uh, connection to the state of Israel, how deep it goes, how over 3,000 years ago it goes. And so once you set that agenda, mm -hmm. it's, very, it's much more difficult for the other side to come in and do these shenanigans and make this kind of impact. Yeah. It's also much more difficult for them to recruit the young students who obviously think it's a social justice cause, but it's not. It's been hijacked by groups like SIA and SJP, um, and not, certainly not for social justice reasons. Pretending that it's a social justice issue yes. is a very important tactic that the other side uses against mm -hmm. Israel. We'll talk more about that when we return with Merle Cates here on JLTV. I'm Roz Rothstein. See you in a few minutes. Don't move. <laughs> Welcome back to Stand With Us on JLTV. I'm here with Merle Cates, the Executive Director in Canada for Stand With Us. And we're talking about all the issues that you have faced, and we're about to hear how you have grown locally. Mm -hmm. But before we do, I want to pitch, pitch, <laughs> <laughs> that you go to our website, that you can have one free thing under resources, go to resources. So standwithus.com, go to resources at the very top, scroll down and you'll see resources, and then pick one thing and send us a note and say, Roz Rothstein said, I could have one thing for free uh, at no cost to me for shipping or anything. So we will send that to you. And please remember to support Stand With Us. Do remember to support us if you know of a foundation please make sure that you know they know about us and our incredibly important work. Back to Canada. So I've always felt that Canada is, um, the, the college campus situation is actually degrees worse than what we hear about in the United States. They, they are further along with yeah. their, their efforts to demonize the state of Israel. We are. Would you agree? Definitely. Canada is more like the UK um, in that we have been punished for a very long time. We're, we're, our challenge is a very well-funded organization, including the largest labor union in Canada, who are extremely anti-Israel and publish that as part of their platform, are part of the BDS movement, and they have the teaching assistance across the country. Um, and we're working against very uh, powerful agenda. The uh, students report to something called the Canadian Federation of Students. So all the student leaders are members of that union. That union comes under the labor union, Canada's largest mm -hmm. labor union. So there are tentacles for the BDS movement all over the community and certainly really embedded in campuses. And we're just blessed with the most incredible campus coordinator 
Emerson Fellows, um, they're always shining stars. They're, they're people who can meet these great challenges. Let me, uh, okay, so, so I would say the worst campuses we have seen are in the UK. Uh, next uh, strata would be the campuses in Canada, and then next we see the ones in the United States and the activities that all of us read and hear about that we're so concerned about and propel some of the efforts uh, at Stand With Us, or a lot of our efforts. Anyways, um, I wanted to go back to this issue of pretending, yes. pretending that the whole boycott divestment movement is actually so important because it's a quote unquote social justice cause. That's where young people get yes. so hooked in because they really think they're doing something good. True. They're so. lied to. They're lied to. Um, faculty members are hijacked. Uh, it becomes a, a social work entire program where we have, for instance, a wonderful young student who we had to wait till she graduate graduated to be able to tell the world that her placement officer, a member of faculty, wouldn't allow her to be placed in any Jewish organization because she considered them anti-social justice. So it, it is I read abuse. That. I read it's that. It's crazy. It, has that been released yet? Yeah, that that's story? what I'm talking about. It just so, now. So I had can a reporter we name about. the school? No, not, no. Yet. not yet. We can't yet. The reporter's okay. writing about right. it next week. <laughs> okay, this is a this is a very scary story. But it she's is. mentioned the story, which is okay. So imagine this happened to my kid too, in a different oh. way. A kid is in a department. They could even be a you know honors student, and they want to go and do something with the Jewish Federation or UJA or you know whatever big umbrella organization. And they're told by their faculty advisor, "Oh no 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 no! You cannot go to that group because uh, they're anti-social justice." What do you mean they're anti-social justice? Well, if they're pro-Israel. Uh, they're they're anti-social. So this whole thing is just this is a package. Yes, it's a package. Of uh, you know, like everybody kind of coordinating the, these terms and this concept, so that you're fooling, you're fooling young people into thinking that really, if they if they do this and go along with this, they're really doing a good thing. Yes, and young people are liberal and idealistic. And I always think back to when I was a freshman, if someone said to me, these people are being oppressed and you can help them by joining this movement, I might have done the same thing. And it's we have to bring the truth to as many students as we can because what they're reading, what they're learning about is absolute lies. We do a very unique program in Canada, and this is kind of off the subject, but it, it has a strange name. It's called Word Swap. But basically we Word bring... Word Swap. Yes. Word Swap. It's okay. for dialogue. So we bring somewhere between six to nine Israelis, and they are Muslim Druze, Bedouin, someone who lives in a settlement, a young person, um, and someone who's in Tel Aviv and completely secular. Uh, maybe, maybe someone who's gay uh, and someone who's from Ethiopia and Israeli. And what they do is they fan out on campus and they are accessible and friendly and they offer coffee and conversation and generally in Arabic say, hi, I'm from Israel. Do you have any questions about my country? And of course, the answer on almost every campus, by almost every student and faculty members at times, is, I didn't know there were any Arabs living in Israel. How can you be living in Israel as an Arab? So we're going to need to uh, break in a moment, mm -hmm. uh, but what a great idea. My goodness, I know about this because, of <laughs> course, we've supported it. Uh, but what a great idea. Imagine bringing the tapestry of what Israel is. It's Jewish, it's Arab, it's Druze, it's Ethiopian, it's, you know, Christian, it's Muslim. You know, you've got the whole tapestry and it works well, even though people who are lying to students uh, mm -hmm. and others trying to make it appear that it is not working well and it's apartheid right. and all these other lies right. and you know whatever. Can't say apartheid. To this so <laughs> we will be right back. Please don't leave us. We want to hear how you've grown and what your challenges are currently. <laughs> uh, so don't leave. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to JLTV. This is Stand With Us. I'm Roz Rothstein, and we are here with Merle Cates, the executive director in our Canadian office. Very, very exciting growth that you've experienced mm -hmm. during the last, how many years? Four? Four years. Four years. Yeah. Amazing. And thank you, Merle, for all that you have done. Uh, really such an incredible force locally in Canada and having built that up so much. You mentioned in the last two segments mm -hmm. uh, about the Emerson Fellow, so I just want to clarify, there's a Stand With Us Emerson Fellow at many of the at-risk schools that we have across the United States and in Canada. And what that is, is a, uh, a student that is demonstrating leadership mm -hmm. that we take on as a, as a uh, fellow for a full year. It's funded by Stephen Rita Emerson, who mm -hmm. are incredible, and they're on our board of directors in Los Angeles, and uh, they have made that possible. So as far away as Canada and the at-risk schools in the Canadian right. sort of uh, surroundings, we have our Emerson Fellows there. So that's what that is. And she keeps saying because she's so proud of them, right? I am. I stand yeah. on their shoulders. So anytime, thank you for, for saying. I know, I think we've, we've really built a wonderful program in Canada. We've grown. We started with two Emersons in the country, and we will have 12. Um, you have 12 this year? We're going to have 12. Wow. Did you hear that? We have 12 Emerson Fellows in Canada this year. And we're launching so a chapter. So I didn't know that we had 12. Uh -huh. That is fantastic. News. We're right across the country now from coast to coast. Uh, we're launching a chapter, a full chapter in Winnipeg. Um, we're going to be more active in Montreal. Uh, we are already there on very at-risk campuses, Concordia and McGill. And we have a campus coordinator who not only through identifies these Emerson Fellows and finds us these wonderful student leaders, but she travels from coast to coast. That's and Zena. That's Zena. And she... Hi, Zena. Is, we love you. <laughs> we, we love her. Zena is really a gift to all of those students, and they, they all love her. They all want to work with her. They want to support Israel through Stand With Us because Zena represents us so well and so professionally. Um, so just let me interrupt for one second. So we have a hierarchy in all of our different offices. We have the director like Merle. Mm -hmm. We have a campus coordinator when it's a busy office. Mm -hmm. We have a high school coordinator dealing with the high school leadership and training so that students are going to know what they're doing when they, by the time they get into their colleges. Um, and soon we're going to have middle school. We have a middle school curriculum, which is very, very exciting. exciting. <laughs> we're just launching this fall. Wow. And, um, and then there's the community work and social media work. So those are the key areas of what we do. That's right. Uh, and we have done it with your partnership. Well, we just hired a high school coordinator uh, last year. The high school coordinator has been launching the program in Toronto. That's our um, pilot city, obviously. And we hope to move that more in Toronto, across the country, to cities where we now understand, because of your success here, that we can end up with student leaders on campuses. They can go there instead of uh, crouching because they're so stunned and shocked by the hatred they see for Israel and Jews. They can actually stand up with confidence and speak about Israel. Is crouching a uh, Canadian word? Do you mean crouching? I mean crouching. <laughs> I mean, that's a guilt Troy word the, for the many people. Yeah, we, have, we are. Yeah, and, crouching. And use. Cr crouching. Okay. And use in all those extra, <laughs> extra words. Um, and so, so uh, just just to explain, I'm sorry. Yes. I have to I have to tell them because yes. I have to admit that the high school program is one of my favorite Stand With Us programs. Yeah. Why? Because you know, imagine a student coming into a college campus right. and deer in the headlights. Maybe they love Israel, but they don't know how to teach Israel. They don't know how to respond to what they're seeing. They've never seen anti-Semitism, and now suddenly they're bombarded. So we like to start in the high school with students that are identified leaders. Yes. So they're already leaders, and so we take them and we. We mold them and work with them so that they can be extraordinary leaders 
right. by the time they get to the college campus. And that's what we're growing in Canada as well. What's interesting is that some of those students have gone to Jewish day schools all the way through and Jewish camps. And they come to a college campus. Exactly. For us, it's universities. And they have no idea how to defend Israel. Well, that's They've right. been taught a love of Judaism, they, but they don't know the, the history of Israel. They don't know the facts that they can use to refute the lies that you they're You are telling hearing. the story of my own children, really? three kids that graduated Jewish schools, love Israel, mm -hmm. but could not, 15 years ago, could not respond to the challenges they were facing. So that is the story. And it's what's happening right yeah. now. That's right. Yeah, students are coming back to us from high schools with stories of anti-Semitic incidents, with a teacher who says to grade 11s that um, Bibi Netanyahu is a fascist pig. Um, these students, they hide. They go into yeah, hiding. They don't know what to say. And that's right. They don't know what to say. So, so if you're a uh, high school educator watching this right now, uh, call us and bring us to your school just to even give the students a glimpse of what it means BDS, a glimpse of what they may see on their campuses with uh, anti-Semitism, mm -hmm. and help us identify on your uh, campus possible leadership that can work with us. Yes. So unfortunately, <laughs> we're going to have to conclude, but I want to congratulate you for your growth for your work, and uh, may you continue to go from strength to strength, Thank as we you. say. Yes. Really, and uh, it's exciting to watch uh, the Canadian uh, office mm -hmm. grow so beautifully, <laughs> and congratulations to your board of directors. They're amazing. They are amazing. We so uh, once again, please order something. We'll give it to you for free, and also recommend us to the foundations that you know, because we do need support mm -hmm. for all the work that we do. Trust me, we need support. We have to raise that money every single year. So join us next time on JLTV. Stand with us. We'll see you next time.